You want to know how to calculate the concrete slab or you want to build a concrete slab of your own and you want to calculate the reinforcement. We will calculate a simple concrete slab step by step in this video. Hi, my name is Marcus and welcome to this video where we will calculate a concrete slab which is evenly loaded, four sides supported with three rotating supports. Before we start, I will show you a short experiment I have made with a normal sheet of paper uh, that will demonstrate the difference between a one side and a double side supported slab. For this experiment, I took a normal piece of paper, a DNA4 paper, and I put these um, wood logs on the, on the table. I put the paper on it, and you, when you put it like this with two side support, it acts like a sing, uh, simple beam. Deviation is very high, goes down to the, to the table. Then you add Two more supports, you have four side support slab. Deviation is much lower and you will see later even the bending moments will be much lower because it's, um, it's carrying in two sides. I have to say one basic thing. I want to keep this, this calculation as simple as possible. Nevertheless, the steps should be um, as correctly as possible concerning the codes um, using um, the types of, um, um, of security factors and the concept of security, the concept of uh, design levels because when we do this correctly now you can use these methods of work for, for other um, calculations as well. Now we're getting into the calculation, it's, it's getting uh, very technical now, but uh, it shouldn't be a problem because we are engineers, so it shouldn't be a problem. What we need is a um, uh, calculator would be fine, you need these tables, we're getting to that later, and a table like that, we're going to discuss that later. So what you need, what you need for a, a calculation of the slab? You need uh, the dimensions, you need uh, the materials, and you need the loads. That's the three basic things you should put together first. Once we have put together the basic um, elements, um, we go into the loads. So we determine the characteristic loads. From them, we can determine the um, design loads. From the loads, design loads, we can determine the deformations uh, and we can determine the bending moments and from them the um, reinforcement. For the dimensions we begin with the, with the span. You have a ground view and you have a, uh, a span LX and a span LY and for this for this calculation we always use the LX as the shorter span. So here we have a slab with four supports, four side support. The span ratio should be within 0 0.5 and 2. So the, the longer span should not be more than twice the shorter span. The next dimension we need is the height of the slab. Um, usually you, you don't know the height so probably you, you have um, an idea how high the slab should be or the architect gives you a height or you just have to make a sup supposition. Having the height of the slab you can subtract uh, the cover, the concrete cover and the theoretically is the half of the diameter of the bar so you, you, sh you should uh, subtract some millimeters, a couple of millimeters for, for the, um, the diameters of the bars. Then you get the statical height, we call it D. You will see 
um, the script all the time and for a concrete example so you can follow properly I will put the numbers, the concrete numbers in the script in red letters. For this example we take uh, spans of 5 meters and span of 7.5 meters. Um, the short one is the LX, the, the longer one is the LY. As we make the calculation without a computer, we will also need the span ratio, which is the longer span divided by the shorter span, so it's uh, 7.5 divided by 5 gives a span ratio of 1.5. For, for this example, we take um, a concrete slab height of 160 millimeters uh, and I suppo suppose uh, a statical height of one, 125 millimeters so I subtracted 35 millimeters for concrete cover and a bar diameter. Concerning the concrete um, quality Check out your local quality of your of the concrete. I have to say, for for slabs, usually the bearing capacity will never be a problem uh, concerning the concrete. It's always the uh, the the reinforcement which is um, crucial for the dimensions. Nevertheless, we have to check the concrete because. Um, uh, we need the E modulus for the, for the calculation of the deformations. Usually, E modulus will be between for a, for a regular concrete. E modulus will be between thirty thousand and uh, thirty five thousand newton per square millimeters. So, for this example, we will uh, calculate with thirty two thousand and five hundred newton per square millimeters as an as an average value. Now we go for the steel. The steel quality is very important. Of course you have to check the steel quality you, you want to use for your construction. Usually you have um, uh, names of steels like S500, B500 or something like that. This is uh, will be steel with yield tensions of 460 newton per square millimeters. When you have lower quality of steel, you have you will have to reduce uh, the yield tension, of course. So you have to check your local steel, the steel you want to use for your construction, for the design. You have to know the yield tension of your rebars. Having the the yield tension in our case, it's 460 newton per square millimeters. We will, for the design, we will reduce this by the factor of 1.05. So we end up uh, with a, a tension of FYD, we call that FYD, of 435 Newton per square millimeters. And there's another thing that's very important for an engineer. You have always to check two basic things for a construction. First thing is the serviceability. So that's all things um, concerning uh, deformations, uh, vibrations, um, cracks, aesthetics, all these things that's not um, bearing capacity. Maybe you have sliding doors and you have to, uh, to make sure that the, the deformations are low enough you can still open the sliding doors. When, when you can't open the sliding doors the serviceability is not given. The second thing you have to calculate of course and that's what that's a topic that most people think of is the structural safety. Of course the structure has to be safe. That means you have to design the proper reinforcement. You have to have enough reinforcement to carry the construction. Breaking this floats down to our example, for the slab are two things, they are crucial. 
The first thing in serviceability is the deformations. And the second thing is the, the structural safety. We make sure the structural safety by putting in the required reinforcement. Now we're getting in the loads. First step of the loads is you put together the so-called ca characteristic loads. That's the real and effective loads you have without any factors. Usually that will be the self-weight of the structure, that will be a dead load and that will be a life load. So for our example the um, characteristic loads will be um, the, the, for the self weight it will be the height of the slab multiplied by the concrete weight that's 4.0 uh, kN per square meter for the dead load uh, it's of course it depends on what, what you put on your slab um, when we have let's say we have a terrace you have uh, 4 cm of split or sand and you have some uh, garden slabs you put that together that gives the dead load of 1.76 kN per square meter. Life load, of course, depends what you need. For a terrace, according to Euro codes or Swiss codes, it's uh, 3 kN per square meters. These characteristic loads are the basic for the further uh, calculation. From these, we calculate all the uh, the design loads afterwards. So next step will be the design loads for the serviceability. That's uh, the design loads for the deformations. And these are uh, security factors actually um, according to the codes. That will be for the self-weight and for the dead load will be 1.0 because this is quite clear how much it will be. That's effective and that's what what causes the deformations. For the serviceability, for the deformations, we don't have to put the complete uh, life load, so we can reduce, reduce it by the factor of 0 0.3. Putting this together, you can take a, the calculator. Uh, you need, don't need a computer, but the calculator would, would be fine. Um, we get a PD ser, meaning that's the P is uh, the, the complete load on the design level for the serviceability. So the PD ser will be 6.7 kN per square meter. The next step of the calculation of the loads is the, the, the design loads for the structural safety. For the structural safety we need to have a, a security, we need to have a span of security. The security factors uh, for the structural safety, they're called load factors. They're based on the, the accuracy of the load. According to uh, usual codes, the, the, the load factor for self-weight and, and dead load will be 1.35. The security factor or the load factor for a life load will be 1.5. So, getting into our example, take the characteristic loads again, like before with the serviceability. Taking the characteristic loads for our three uh, load cases. Taking the load factors, you can um, calculate now the PD, the load on design load for the structural safety. This will be for our example, will, the PD will be 12.3 kN, kN per square meters. So now we are finished with the loads. We have two numbers we can uh, take for the further calculation. We have a design load uh, for serviceability for deformation of uh, 6.7 kN per square meter and we have uh, a design load for the structural safety of 12.3 kN per square meter. That's the two numbers. We make the further calculations. Now, as we want to do the calculation without a computer, we need a tool to do so. There was a, an Austrian engineer 
uh, called Friedrich Czerny and he has made a tool for these calculations, the so-called Czerny tables. And Czerny has uh, made tools for uh, different support conditions. He has made tools for foresight supported. He has made tools uh, for tables for um, uh, with restraint support and with free rotating support and for all kinds of different combinations. For this example we have said we uh, calculate a slab with foresight support and with free rotating support. We don't want to make it too complicated. We keep it simple so we just take the one table for the foresight support for the free rotating system. I will provide uh, the, this table, this, this one table uh, for download. I will put the link down in the, in the description. So we have the table for the evenly loaded, foresighted, free rotating support. The tables are built up like this. They have um, a line where you have the span ratio and it goes from 1 to 2. That's why for this example you have always to take the LY as the longer span and the LX as the shorter span. You will always end up between 1 and 2. Once you have the span ratio, you go into the row and in the row you have the different values you have to take for the further calculation. As I said before, for our slab we have to calculate actually two things. One is the deformation and the second thing is the bending moments for the reinforcement. And as we have two sides, two directions, we have two bending moments. So in the end it will be three uh, values we have to take out of the, of the table. Looking at the table uh, at the very bottom you have a graphic that shows you the values for a span ratio of 1.5. Now we have all the, the values and all the tools for the calculation of the deformation. Uh, I have put you here the formula for the deformation coming out of the journey tables. They're written in the tables as well, but maybe you it's very it's a little diff difficult to, to read, so I put it clearly here on, on the script. It's the, the PD ser multiplied by the LX uh, by the power of 4 divided by the E modulus uh, and the stat uh, and the and the slab height by the power of 3. That, multiplied and that's important by the value of the journey table. Now you can make the calculation for the deformation which is the elastic calculation that's very important. Uh, the elastic calculation for the, for the uncracked concrete and the homogeneous uh, concrete. Don't forget to put in the value of the journey table which is in this case 0 0.0927. You just take out the value of the, of, the, of the table. So you will end up with an elastic deformation F el elastic of 2.92 millimeters. And, and this is something basic. This is something that works for all deformation um, calculations of concrete structures. You will always get the elastic um, value out of a cal calculation. So you always will have to multiply that um, result by a factor to get the effective deformation. For a normal concrete structure this will be, this factor will be um, between 3 and 5, something like that. So I usually take, um, for those constructions, I take the factor 4. So now we, ha we have to calculate the effective uh, deformation, which is 4 times the 2.92 uh, millimeters. So we will end up uh, with an effective deformation of 11.7 millimeters. Now it's up to you to decide 
how much the deformation should be. Is it too high, too too big? Is it too is it low enough? How much is it allowed to be? As a rule of thumb, you can you can take the span divided by 250 to 350. Um, I usually take the, the, the span, which is the shorter span, for 5,000 millimeters divided by 300, gives you a value of 16.7 millimeters. So that gives you a range, gives you an idea how much um, could be a, a deformation, possible deformation. In this case, with 11.7, we are lower than the 16.7 millimeters, so you can say it's okay. What do you do when the deformation is too big? There's, there's two possibilities, basically. Um, the first one is you, you reduce the loads. So you, you say, um, my life load is too big, I take a, a lower life load. That's the first one. Maybe you, you don't want to change the loads. So you go back and you heighten the, the thickness of the slab. So when you when you say okay it's uh, 160 millimeters is is gives you a deformation that is too big, you go back and you make um, a slab of 118 millimeters or 200 millimeters. You heighten uh, this this height of the slab. Of course, you will have to go through the ca whole calculation from the beginning. Meaning you have to change uh, the characteristic load of the self weight that will will change. Uh, will also change the design load for the deformation. Will of course also change the design load for the stru structural safety. Then you will end up here again, calculating the effective deformation, checking is it within the range or is it still too high or whatever. You can decide now is it is it okay or do I have to change again? Uh, getting back to the video of the beginning of the of this uh, experiment, we can now compare how much deviation or the, the, the deformation would be uh, in a simple uh, in a simple beam. When you take the formula of the sim simple beam, you will end up with an F elastic of 3.7 millimeters which is um, yeah, a lot higher than the 2.9 millimeters of, of the two-sided supported slab. Now we have checked the, the deformations. Uh, now we are get, getting into the structural safety, meaning for the slab we are going to calculate the bending moments and from the bending moments we will calculate back the required reinforcement. So we also use the tool of the journey tables. So we get back to the journey tables and we take out the formula for the bending moments. I put you down the formula here, which is the, the P, that's the, that's the load, the design load for the structural safety, multiplied by the L x square divided by the journey factor. In the journey formulas always, um, for this case, always the Lx um, is put in. So uh, you have to uh, calculate both directions, the mx and the my, but in the formula it's always the Lx you have to put in. The difference in the moments is given by the uh, journey factor. You have a factor for the moment, moment in x direction and you have a factor for the y direction. The journey factors uh, for the span ratio 1.5 are 13.7 and 34.7. So now you take the formula, the formula looks the same in for both directions, but these factors, these journey factors. You can calculate them easily now. You have an MDX of 22.4 kN per meter and an MDY of 8.9 kN per meter. And remember, you put in the, the, the loads 
the design loads for, for the structural safety in these formulas. Using the design loads to calculate the moments, you automatically get the, the design moments, meaning you have built in the, the, the safety, the safety factors in your calculation. Now we can compare the, the results, the bending moments, with the simple beam, which is a QL square or PL square eighth. You will get a bending moment of 38.4 kN. So you see the bending moments are, are crucially lower than for a simple beam. And this, of course, is the, the whole sense of this, of this example, to reduce the bending moments and, of course, to reduce um, the reinforcement you use. Now we're getting quite close to the, to the end, to the results. Before we um, definitely design or calculate the reinforcement, we have to check the minimum reinforcement. The simplest way to, uh, to determine a minimum reinforcement is to take uh, the, the area of the, uh, of the concrete, but using the statical height, not the, 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 the slab height, but the, the statical height, and multiply it by 0.15%. Gives you a value you should not go under with the reinforcement. Taking our example, uh, we will have 0.15% of reinforcement you should not go under. Now having calculated this area of reinforcement, uh, you can use uh, another tool to, uh, to verify, uh, to, to determine the diameters and the, the distance of the bars. This is uh, just a geometric tool uh, giving you the distance of the bars and, and the diameters of the bars and that, then you can read out of the, the table the area of the reinforcement. So I go for a, a, a distance of 20 centimeters and gives you a, a diameter of 8, a bar of 8 gives, gives you a 251 square millimeters. So, um, for the minimum reinforcement, you can take um, a rebar of a diameter of 8 mm in a distance of 200 mm. That's what you should put in in the, in the slab uh, at the minimum. Now we calculate the required um, uh, reinforcement for the structural safety. And this formula is, this is general. This, you can use this formula for all the structures, for all the slabs. When you have, or even for beams, when you have a bending moment, uh, you can use this formula to calculate um, a reinforcement. So the formula is, uh, you have the A, S, the required, which is the bending moment. Um, I calculate in kilonewton and meters and I multiply the bending moment by 10 uh, by the power of 6. That's just a conversion of, um, of units. Uh, I divide it by 0 0.9 uh, and by the statical height and by the FDY. When you remember in the beginning, the very beginning, of the video we had the, um, the materials. Uh, you have this uh, 435 newton per square millimeter. So this you put in um, the moment in kilonewton meters and you put in the statical height in millimeters and you put in the, uh, the FDY in newton per square millimeters we will end up with square millimeters for the re required reinforcement. For our example, we will end up in the X direction. We have two, you, you have two bending moments. You have the X direction, which is the, the higher moment. Uh, if you put in the values, you will end up with 458 uh, square millimeters per meter uh, as a required reinforcement. 
This value is bigger than the, the minimum reinforcement, so it, it is crucial. Um, I go back to, to, my, to my tool and uh, I choose a, a reinforcement of uh, 10, a diameter of 10 millimeter every 150 millimeters. Uh, so I will end up with four, 523 square millimeters, which is higher than 485. So uh, 10 every 150 is okay. I do the same for the Y direction, which is uh, the lower moment. So I will end up with uh, a required reinforcement of 185 square millimeters. And when I compare it to the minimum I have uh, calculated before, I can see it is lower. So um, I don't put in uh, 182, but I put in the minimum reinforcement, which we have calculated before. And this is a diameter of 8 millimeters every 200 millimeters. And with that, we have finished our calculation of the, of the reinforcement. The formation, formations are within range and we have enough reinforcement put in. The structural safety is also given. Having finished the reinforcement, the calculation of the reinforcement, uh, I have uh, made this sketch of the reinforcement like this. Maybe you make a plan, maybe you, uh, you go and get the, by the reinforcement by yourself. I recommend to put end hooks or even better you, you bend the reinforcement back uh, by 600 to 800 millimeters and you always put in some rebars in the, in the upper layer. For the structural safety and for the deformation, the lower reinforcement like it's uh, drawn here in blue would be sufficient. You don't need an upper reinforcement necessarily. Um, of course, um, you can put in, uh, it's not wrong to put in an upper reinforcement, which should be optional, should be uh, at the level of the minimum reinforcement. So now we're finished with our calculation, with the design. Now we can build this, uh, this slab and everything is, is okay, from, even from uh, an engineering point of view. To make a short summary, what do you need, How do you, what do you do? You put together the dimensions LX, LY, DH and DD. Um, you put together the materials with the E modulus and the, of the concrete and the FYD of the steel. You put together the, the loads, the, the, the self weight, the dead load and the life load. Um, from these loads you determine the, the, the design loads for A, the serviceability for the deformations and B, for the structural safety. Then you make the, the calculation of the, of the deformation, for the, of the effective def deformation. You compare it with the value you want to have. Is it too big or, or is it okay? Uh, and in the end, you, dis you calculate the, the bending moments, X and Y direction, and from there, the um, required reinforcement. That's it. So, I hope you liked this video, and you're smarter now concerning slabs and its reinforcement. Check out my homepage, you can download from there this, the whole script the cross-section table and the journey table. So this was how to calculate a simple concrete slab without a computer. But there's many more items to make videos about. So make sure to subscribe, to like and to write comments. Tell me what topics would be interesting for you. So thank you for watching, take care and see you soon.